Okay, the question was about z-scores and why do we have to multiply them by standard deviation or standard error, okay? And this was a question by um, Joseph um, Johnson and and um, I'm going to try and I was going to write that question but I thought it'd be better to just show you a video of the answer for this question. So the first step is to understand what z-scores are. So z-scores are, if this is your mean, z-score is the distance, this distance from your mean, right? Distance from mean, but the unit is in number of standard deviations. So let's take an example. Let us say the mean is $50 and your standard deviation is $5. So if you get a value, so this is 50, and if you get a value here, which is 60, this value, and let's call it value A, A is 60, so A is 60 minus 50 is about plus $10 more than your mean. So this is in number of uh, dollars, right? It's ten dollars more than your mean. But if you want to figure out what the z-score is, this would be ten divided by five, and this would be two standard deviations. So if instead I came and said, you know, this is two standard deviations, for you to figure out what this value is, you can't add two to fifty because this isn't standard deviations and 50 is in dollars. So you've got to figure out how many dollars this represents. So you're going to multiply 2 times 5, and that will give you 10. And since z-score is positive, it will give you 50 plus 10, which is $60. Similarly, if you have a z-score of, let's say, negative 2, in this case, this would be 2, my negative 2 multiplied by 5, which will be negative $10, or $10 less than your mean. And this will be 50 minus 10, which is $40. And that would be this side, the left-hand side of the normal distribution. Right? This and this will be same distance. So that's one of the reasons z-score is a number of standard deviations, and if you multiply it, times the standard deviation, that would give you the actual value uh, which you're looking at. Now let's move to sampling. And in sampling, let's talk about why we are multiplying z-scores by the standard error. So remember now, in sampling, we are not talking about each individual value. The x-axis is all the sample means. So let's take another example. Let's assume that the population mean is $50 and the population standard deviation is, let's assume it's $10. And we take a sample of 100 people, right, from this population. And so we end up, this sample will have a sample mean, right? And if we take multiple samples, this will have multiple sample means. For each sample of 100, there would be a sample mean. And the standard deviation of all these sample means of sample means is called your standard error, right? 
And this standard error can be estimated using population standard deviation divided by your square root of sample size. In this case, it's going to be $1. So, in, if you have a distribution of sample means, right, and you take a sample of 100 and you want to figure out the chance of getting 53, right? Now that's $3. This 53 is a sample mean, right? So we're not saying what's the probability that one person is 53, but we're looking at what's the probability that the sample of 100 is 53. This is $3. The difference between this sample mean and the population mean is $3, but it's also z-score of three standard deviations. But if you multiply these standard deviations by the standard error, that should get you $3. Similarly, on this side, if you have negative z-score of, let's say, negative 2, now that would be two standard deviations less than the mean, and so this would be 2 multiplied by 1, which is minus 2, and that value will be $48. Okay, so I hope everybody understands why we are using standard error here. So let's move on to confidence intervals and why we are multiplying that by confidence in confidence intervals where we are multiplying the z-score by standard error. So in confidence intervals, what we have is the middle two values. And let's assume that we are looking at this at 95%. Right? This is this area between these two lines is 95%. And we know that the population mean falls between these two areas. But we don't know what the population mean is, and so we essentially assume that the sample mean, right, sample mean is a representative of the population mean, but we know that sample mean has some sampling error. So this is plus sampling error, this is minus sampling error. So this area and this area are going to be 2.5%. Okay. So if we take this distance here, the z-score, we want to find out the z-score for this point here and the z-score for this point. We're looking at the area now. So z-score for 2.5% will be a value, and it normally comes out to 1.96, right? This is going to be the z-score. This is going to be negative 1.96, and this plus z-score will be plus 1.96. So this is 1.96. This point here is 1.96 standard deviations less than the mean. And this point here, let's call this point x and this point y. x is 1.96 standard deviations less than the mean, y is 1.96 standard deviations more than the mean, and the standard deviation we are talking about because we are dealing with sample means is your standard error. So when you multiply your z-score times standard error, it will actually give you the actual amount it is more or less. I hope this answers your question. If you have more questions, um, send, send me uh, an email and I'll post it up on, um, on Blackboard and we can, I'll try to get you another video on it.